And now we get the Schumacher shit. <laughs> I mean, this is this is the sublime to ridiculous easily. I mean, I'm not going to cover these much because they're bad movies. Um, Batman Forever to start with. This is where I knew the series was going down fast because when I first saw Batman Forever, I hated it. Hated it. Hated it so badly. Now I can stand it, but. Screwed up Two Face. Two Face and the Joker are my two favourite Batman villains. They're my two favourites. They're the, easily the ones I love the most. And this one screwed them up. Made them mad. Totally drove them over the top. I hated that. I was just watching this thinking, oh God, what's he doing? Why can't he get do, do Two Face right? And then the Riddler, Jim Carrey's as good as the Riddler. He's not as good as Frank Gorshin in the TV show, but he gives it a go. I mean, he's not given that much to work with. He does great for what he's got, but the characterization is very basic. He's a stalker who's set with Bruce Wayne. Um, eventually, he goes mad, turns out the Riddler, obsessively tries to destroy Bruce Wayne, finds out Bruce Wayne is Batman, goes after Batman. Two Face hates Batman because Batman turned out Two Face. That's it. I mean, it's very pretty. The visuals are very pretty. I mean, of all kind of comic book kind of primal colours, sort of like the watch Dick Tracy and thought, we can do that. Yeah, it's, it's basically Dick Tracy all working with Batman, that's all it is. And the dialogue's awful. I mean, uh, the victory is Robin in it, and Chris O'Donnell's okay. I mean, he's okay. I mean, he gets a bad rap, but I mean, he's given crap to do in both films. So, I mean, he can't do much with crap. So, <laughs> he does what he can, but. He's, he's got nothing to do. I mean, he, he can't make bad stuff look good. So, um, he's fine though. I mean, uh, Val Kilmer is fine as Batman. It's one of those things, the annoying thing was, he was actually a decent Batman, he was a decent Bruce Wayne, but he wasn't given much to do. I mean, if he'd gotten Tim Burton to direct him, if Tim Burton was directing him as Batman, he could have done some really cool stuff, because Val Kilmer's weird as hell. In a lot of his films, and that probably would have Tim Burton quite well, but as for Joe Schumacher, it's a surface level thing. He does a professional job, he's enjoyable to watch, he actually helps keep the whole thing together in lots of ways because he, he knows he's a straight man and he sticks to that. I mean, he knows he's a straight man in this film and he delivers on that level, and that's why it was a heck is he delivered what he had to deliver. Uh, so whenever the film was spouting out of control, Kilmer kind of kept it grounded and Jim Carrey kept it funny. And those two kind of made the film work. Because Tom Lee Jones didn't make the film work. The rest of the sporting characters aren't working. The visuals are okay. But I mean, it keeps adding stuff that makes no sense. But the fact is, no one cares enough to really bring it up. It's like, the end is just... Battle bit after battle scene, battle scene, battle scene. And they've built this massive building that the Batman has to enter and go through. And it's like, who built this? It makes no sense. What was it actually built for? You, you feel there's no, the construction was, it was built apparently to suck people's minds of their credit card details and stuff. But it's like, it's so obviously a thing saying, I am the villain's lair. That it just, doesn't work for where the films were before this and even on its own it feels like it's too obvious for that that film as well because the film is still tr despite being big it doesn't feel as big as that ending suggests it should be so it feels like the end feels like they've built something that doesn't really fit in the film and there's lots of part of psychological stuff that do not work but it's actually once you've seen it, once you're used to what they're doing, it's fine. It's not great, but it's fine. It doesn't deserve any hate. I mean, it probably gets lumped in with uh, Batman and Robin. And even I do it, but it's fine on its own. It's just like, it's cursed because it's tied to the next one. Batman and Robin, fucking awful film. Terrible, terrible, terrible. Everyone's ever, everyone says the same thing. It's hard to say much more about this one. Um... Basically, George Clooney's as Batman, he doesn't work. It's Bruce Wayne, he's okay, but as Batman, nothing. He's just there. 
and you have to be able to play both parts. You can't just play, but play one part. And he's never nothing to do. Then so, so because uh, the character was underwritten, the, the character that should have been dominating the film, Batman, to the through line, he's not there. And there's nothing else to replace that. All you've got is Schwarzenegger was Mr. Freeze and all these puns. Poison Ivy was you know, Thurman doing something. She's meant to be sexy, she's not. Arnold's meant to be moving, he's not. Mr. Freeze is a great character, Poison Ivy is a great character, they're not in this film. Um, Batman has a the most meandering love story. I don't know what the hell his plot's about most of the time. So something about Alfred. Those scenes are doing fine, but it's like they, it's like they cut most of Batman out of Batman. So it's how do you care? Well, there's no through line to any scene. Scenes just happen and happen again and again and again. So lots of things happen, but there's, there's no stakes ever. Even at the end, by the time you get to the end where they're trying to freeze Gotham. There's no stakes anymore because you don't care about anything. So by the time you get to there, you're just thinking, is this over yet? So it's unwatchable trash. I can't say much more about it because it's just, everyone said everything about it. I mean, it's been on the internet so often about how bad this film is. I just can't think of anything that hasn't been covered. So I'll move on because it's just, it's awful. <laughs> All right.